My heart is cold. My moves are cold. What's up my dudes, Valk here. Today we're going to be using Honey Hunter World to go over Yukong's kit because there's some concerns I have with Yukong coming in 1.1. If you guys don't know the banner order, I'm not doing a live stream recap, uh, but the banner order is going to be Silver Wolf and then Luocha, and on Luocha's banner comes Yukong. So we're going to be going over Yukong's kit because I want to make it clear that Yukong seems on the surface level hard to use as long as, you know, the wording translates actually into gameplay because the way it's worded is pretty scary. So we're gonna get into it. Basic attack, not really a big deal. Uh, emboldening Salvo, the skill, we're gonna look at it at level seven. Obtains two stacks of ro Roaring Bow Strings, if I can speak. When war Roaring Bow Strings is active, I don't know why I have issues saying that word, the attack of all allies is increased by 65%. Every time an ally's turn ends, Yukong loses one stack of Roaring Bow Strings. When it's a turn where Yukong gains Roaring Bow Strings by using skill, you roaring bowstrings will not be removed. So basically, the turn that Yu Kong has, where she gains her own roaring bowstrings, uh, it's not going to be removed. So you get like one full rotation of Yu Kong having roaring bowstrings, and then basically everybody's strong after that. But this is kind of the scary wording: is basically it removes one every single time an ally takes a turn. So this means after that first turn, you basically have to be very very careful with your speed tuning of who's going to go first on your second cycle because only the first two actions of your second cycle will actually be boosted by roaring bowstrings and that carries over into the ultimate when using our ultimate i gotta make sure to make it level seven that way we get an accurate look um when using her ultimate if roaring bowstrings is active on yukong all allies crit rate additionally increases by 25% and crit damage increases by 55% at the same time she does imaginary damage to the enemy. So what this means is that they, while I imagine while Roaring Bowstrings is active, um, they're going to get 25% crit rate and 55 crit damage at level 7. This is actually really, really huge, assuming these numbers stay the same. Uh, this is actually really big, but once again, it's going to come down to speed tuning. Now what I mean by this is first turn, no Roaring Bowstring stacks get consumed. These first action after first action after her second turn uh ends up will end up consuming stacks of roaring bowstrings so the first two actions after her second turn activating roaring bowstrings it will consume it now if you use a skill point on her every turn this obviously won't be an issue but if you don't want to use a skill point if you want to try to min max then it ends up in this weird situation where you have to speed tune the hell out of your team and it ends up being very very funky like, what I mean is that, let's say, for example, you have, like, Japar, you have, like, Japar on your team, Bai Lu, uh, Yu Kong, and then uh, Yang Ching. Let's say that's an example team, right? You have um, Yu Kong, who goes first, uses her skill, and then, of course, you're going to have Yang Ching that follows, then Bai Lu, then Japar being the slowest. And then come again, you're going to have Yu Kong go again, this time not use skill, use normal instead, and then you're going to have Yang Ching go who's going to consume one stack of Roaring Bowstrings, and then Bai Lu Go is going to consume the second stack. Now, in this situation, it's fine because Yang Ching's still getting it, but let's say, for example, I have speed boots on Bai Lu, and Bai Lu's actually outspeeding Yang Ching. Then I have a situation where, or let's say I have, like, two characters, instead of running Jepard, who's really slow, instead I have, like, double supports or something, and they're both outspeeding the damage. Well, then, now the supports have eaten the buffs instead. And the damage aren't getting it. This is this is kind of what I'm getting at. Is that you're gonna have to be careful with using Yukong. Generally, as long as you can feed her a skill point every turn, it won't be an issue. But if you uh, if you do do it, then it could be kind of rough. Uh, <laughs> basically, whenever she uses it, it could be end up being pretty rough. Um, I don't know if the cap on Roaring Bowstrings is two stacks. Or if you could potentially infinitely stack it, I don't know. Uh, all in all, Yukong seems insane, seems very strong, Luocha's banner in general seems very, very good to summon on. Don't know why you wouldn't, but I wanted to talk about Yukongs to make people aware of this one thing that could potentially be an issue in some situations here and there. But like I said, if you feed her a skill point every turn, it shouldn't really be an issue. But for people who are trying to min-max skill point usage, this could come up. I don't know. Just want to make this clear for everybody. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.